Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Big cats are the apex predators of Earth. While their preferred game remains the same, most Chimerian habitats have two additional trophic levels above the large cats. The apex predators of Chimera's terrestrial habitats are the robust monarchs, massive 6 to 10 ton theropods. Between the likes of big cats, dromaeosaurs, and the mighty megaraptorans is a class of rare hunters called vassal predators. In both the lowland forest and prairies of the known world, the vassal predator niche is held by a forest racket. In Earth's history, forest rackets, or terror birds, were large predatory birds occupying the top predator title in South America for over 50 million years. They came in diverse forms, with some being comfortable in wetlands, others small game specialists, but most were apex predators of open forest habitats. Despite a common misconception of mammal replacement, their extinction was due to climate change turning their preferred open forest habitats into grasslands and the subsequent extinctions of their favorite game. When terror birds were first harvested in the Middle Miocene, Chimere was predominantly a dense rainforest and they did not leave a lasting impression on the known world. Six million years ago, however, the story was much different. The same context in the known world which made sloths so successful in Chimere also favored these great birds, and they flourished in diversity and success. Although the past million years or so have not been kind to terror birds, there are still three species in the known world, all occupying the vassal predator role. Most common and largest is the fireback, terror birds of the mainland forests. Weighing in at nearly a thousand pounds, and with a hip height of over six feet or two meters, this is the largest forest racket of Earth or Chimere. They are generalist hunters, but prefer slower armored game. While they do contend with young Zentar and the black cockatrice, and their range often encroaches upon the other two, they needs partition by sticking to the lowland forests and wetlands, while young Zentaur are more common in Titan Gardens, and the black cockatrice prefers uneven highlands. Firebacks tend to dominate the other two species in direct confrontations, and are more common in their respective niches than either are in the wetlands and lowland forests, but they are still most common there. These terror birds live in mated pairs and maintain contact with their neighboring couples, but generally hunt alone. Like cockatrices, they will assemble in larger groups to mob and tackle larger game, both at the height of the monsoon season, as megafauna are disrupted and disoriented, and at the height of the dry season, when smaller game have been locally hunted to endangerment, and bringing down tougher giants becomes a necessity. While their preferred game are slower armored prey like sloths and drakes between a thousand pounds and two tons, they can work together to bring down proboscideans, young titans, and even hukulgore sloths under certain circumstances. Another name for the fireback is surgeon bird for their particularly brutal method of killing. They are intelligent animals, and rather than try to pierce the armor of their preferred game, they know the vulnerable places and target them with a rapid precision. Without going into details more graphic than this format will permit, they employ their beak not as a pick or hatchet, but as a hook, latching into soft parts of the prey and yanking it apart until the prey dies of shock and blood loss. They are capable of considerable bursts of speed, but generally prefer pinning down slower armored prey with their long legs and sickle claws before employing the beak for a quick and graphic kill. While many have tried to tame these formidable birds, thus far no attempts have been successful outside of a few folktales of the Age of Witches. They are aggressive and territorial, and while juveniles are tame and will readily follow handlers, adults will view any person other than their handler as food, and the first time their handler disappoints them, they will attack. Being clever, 
Firebacks that were raised by people often know how to open doors and where food stores and children are kept. It is not unheard of for them to learn that humans are a valuable food source, especially if they were raised by handlers, and many Arveleth horror stories center around an escaped pet which came back a year later with a mate and dozen companions that turned an entire village into a grotesque arena of gore. For a time, there were two genera of large forest terrorbirds, one in Nikar and one in Arvel. As the two continents closed in the north, to the point that animals proficient with swimming could cross around a million years ago, the fireback of Arvel took over the forests of Nikar, and now this single species dominates the niche on both continents. The diurnal Nikari terrorbird is now extinct, but unlike in Arvel, there was another species which hunted at a different time of day. The Rohakundi, or Hunger of the Starry Night, is a smaller yet still daunting predator. While technically crepuscular, they represent the counterpart of the daytime hunters of Arvel. Rohakundi are solitary hunters and have a degree of arboreality, which allows them to sleep out of the reach of their larger cousins and Zentar in their habitat. Black cockatrices are quite rare in Nikar, and Rohakundi are more common in the denser highland forests because of it. They are generally skittish, unlike their more aggressive cousins, and actively avoid human settlements. Last and most derived of the Chimeran terror birds is the Harkundi, the sprinting menace of the prairie. When Rhea came to the same Miocene harvest and populated the prairies scattered throughout the open forests, a species of smaller terror bird followed them. Most terror birds are ambush hunters with minimal distance running capabilities. The Harkundi flips this trend on its head, being one of the fastest animals on the prairie and possessing remarkable endurance as well. They support all their weight on a single hoof-like toe, aiding in efficiency, and their legs are bare. The feathers they do retain are sparse, mostly serving to provide camouflage and shade from the sun. While they still hunt Rhea, Harkundi also target pronghorns, camels, and other ungulates which are now the dominant herbivores of the Housey Prairie as it has been for the past million years or so. As Uktan remain with their parents and do not hunt until they are at least late adolescence, the Harkundi enjoy exclusive access to the rank of vassal predator on the prairie, a role at which they excel. The Scavenger King, a large Eudromaeosaur, is bigger and will sometimes displace them from their kill, as do mobs of cockatrices and hyenas, but the Harkundi will hunt in groups to hold their own, especially during the dry season, when small game becomes scarce and they must bring down and defend larger kills. Harkundi are a particular menace to riders, as they can outpace a horse with a rider, and will snatch riders off their horses, sometimes even without being hungry just in response to a chasing instinct. Unfortunately, riders rarely survive these hunts of boredom. The Rakundi is a large predatory bird that shares the Housey Prairie with the Harkundi. While they were long assumed to be a dwarf species of terror bird, they are in fact the last Bathornithid of the known world, having come from the eastern continent of Kairul around a million years ago following the spread of the Housey Prairie habitat. Bathornithids are distantly related birds which have come to Chimere since the Oligocene. While the small generalists were mostly outcompeted by cockatrices, leaving only giant bathornithids similar to terror birds as the majority of the relics, the Rakundi has only survived by targeting small game and flying to evade predation and competition from cockatrices. Rumors of bathornithids even larger than the fireback have been well documented, but none are confirmed. The Rukal, a giant flightless bird, was for a time believed to be an arboreal terror bird, especially considering the climbing habits of the Rohakundi. Fossils of related animals and closer study have since confirmed that this bird is a giant parrot. You can learn more about this butcher of the dead in this episode linked here. While Chimerian terror birds never held the title of apex predator that they did for most of their tenure on Earth, they are quite formidable presence in their ecosystems of the known world and beyond. Forest rackids have long been one of my favorite prehistoric animals. 
This was an episode I've wanted to do for a while, and since I decided to shift the original episode from today to later in the month, since it contains spoilers for my latest anthology, Songs of the Inland Sea, and I want folks getting it for Christmas to have a chance to read it first, so I had a pretty last minute shift in schedule. This episode was sponsored by a group of people, Chris, Connor, Lindsay, James Kalo, and, and Raul the Fool, and I'm super thankful that so many pulled in to make this possible. Y'all are champions to the last. Also, special thanks to Random Paleo Nerd, or Ben Y, who helped me design the Harkundi many years ago and has been invaluable in feedback for this group as a whole. If you want to know more about Terror Birds, I strongly endorse giving him a follow. Thank you all so much for watching, and stay fantastic. Cheers, folks!